Man, what a journey it's been so far. Remember when you came in late? I had to paint my face. That was a lot of fun right there. Still hate looking at you. Worst mask on the shelf for sure. Haven't gotten to you guys yet. Can't wait to watch those movies. But uh, we got to continue on with the next movie. And uh, well, let's see what he's got to say. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Oh, I know a lot of Halloween fans have been looking forward to this one. Halloween Resurrection. We've made it, man. This is the bottom of the barrel when you're scraping the end of that peanut butter Michael Myers jar. This is the crusty, nasty stuff you find, but you still need a sandwich to make, so you do it. And boy, do you regret that decision come the next day. All the work Halloween H2O, 20 years later, managed to do with the Michael Myers franchise. A film that I think successfully revitalized the character, got a lot of people excited to see Michael Myers on the big screen again even with its flaws and issues Halloween H2O did the impossible and then Halloween Resurrection came trucking away to ruin all that so much that we would have to start all the way from scratch with Michael Myers so let's just get this over with let's say trick-or-treat motherfucker one last time to this timelines version of Michael Myers before he disappears into the night. So with the opening of Halloween Resurrection, at this point, the Michael Myers franchise has just given up on giving us a cool opening title card sequence. But as the audience are following a camera as we go inside a mental asylum where we see that this is where Laurie Strode has been since the end of Halloween H2O. In the same facility, we see two employees walking along the halls, one that is recently employed and is being informed of some of the patients they have in here like Laurie Strode. And here's the mind-blowing explanation that we get of how Michael Myers was able to survive the beheading he received in Halloween H2O. It turns out before all the paramedics arrived to the scene, one lone paramedic arrived first. And as this paramedic moved in closer to check up on Michael Myers, he came to life, crushed this paramedic's voice box so he was no longer able to speak, proceeded then to swap clothes with the paramedic and walk out of the grounds of the boarding school in the night without anybody realizing, negating the amazing ending that Halloween H2O provided to us of a good conclusion between Lord Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, where now it's revealed Laurie Strode accidentally killed an innocent man who could not speak and for some reason was just not able to remove his mask. Now this is obviously a little bit of a controversial way to bring back Michael Myers since it did take away from that good ending of H2O, but I actually do not mind this explanation. It's crazy but yet believable enough to where it is something that I could see Michael Myers doing. It just sucks all the baggage that comes along with this explanation now making Laurie a criminal. I think if Halloween Resurrection ended up being a really good movie, people would have loved this explanation of how Michael Myers came back to life but because we know how bad this film turns out it just gives us even more reason to be upset that this is how they explain Michael Myers coming back. But back into the movie Laurie Strode has been here for three years since the events of Halloween H2O and it is once again Halloween night meaning there's a chance Michael Myers could appear and of course he does with Laurie seeing him outside her window. A couple of security guards happen to catch Michael walking through the building thinking he's just a regular patient and that they need to go put him back into his room go to investigate not before they split ways though as one of the officer has not had lunch and well this vending machine will provide him the nutrition he needs to fight Michael Myers look a well stuffed vending machine is my weakness too look at some of these damn snacks you don't see a vending machine like this anymore but while the security guard is munching down some good vending machine food he hears his colleague scream heading off to investigate it he does find his colleague's head in the washing machine walking backwards to then trip over his body how did this officer walk his way to the washing machine Machine without seeing that body there first. But this is Halloween Resurrection and we have no time for logic as Michael Myers busts out a new signature move he just learned in the previous movie. A move I like to call the Myers pull down. It's good to know after all these movies he's still collecting new moves here and there. But on that note there is a couple of things here that I do want to give praise to Halloween Resurrection. Because I don't just want to bash these movies. There's someone out there how little of a group that might be that actually love this movie. And one thing I will give this film over Halloween H2O is that Halloween H2O just did not have a great color color palette. It felt very over bright and had no real theme to it. Whereas with Halloween Resurrection, they kind of go back to the cinematography that was shown in Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, with some of that blue lighting, darker tones, and shaded light that hits Michael Myers' face. But the other praise I want to give this movie is the mask of the film, because I actually dig it. I think this mask is not only better than the one that we got in Halloween H2O, it definitely belongs in some of the higher tier masks that we've gotten throughout the series. I think the people who don't like
like the mask in Halloween Resurrection just don't like it because of the association to the movie. And I can kind of understand that because it's hard to separate the two. It's kind of the same way I feel with Chucky and his stitched up look. To where I think the design choice to have Chucky have that stitched up, stapled look all across his face was a brilliant idea to reinvent the character. It just sucks that they did it at a time where they were trying to turn Chucky into a comedian and less of a horror figure. So now when I look at that version of Chucky, I think more of a Chucky who tries to be funny, who's silly. And I feel the same can be said about this mask. Since it came out in a movie that was so bad, laughable, dumb, made no sense and was just ridiculous, you just can't separate the two. But this mask makes a lot of things work. I actually do like the over detailing shadows on the creases of the mask. And even though this one still overexposes the eyes, the actual actor wearing the mask this time around actually has a good physical form for Michael and even does certain things with his eyes so that he just doesn't look like he's super wide eye open like the actor in Halloween H2 O does because it looks like every time that man's face was on screen his eyes was just wide as can be not to mention the jawline of this mask is also pretty flawless it gives the illusion that this boy is strong as you can see by the way he doesn't even use hands to rip through this door as he's looking for Laurie Strode luckily Laurie has been preparing for this moment ever since she found out that Michael is still out there and alive to the point that she even set up a trap for him on the rooftop of this mental institution just like Laurie if you had the ability to go onto the roof and make this trap why don't you just escape the place and go looking for Michael? Why are you sitting duck waiting for him to show up? But I'm such an idiot, I have to remember Halloween Resurrection, no logic allowed in this one. Let's continue on. But Laura Strode has finally done it once again. She's managed to get the upper hand on her brother, ready to kill him off and finish him for good until she gets flashbacks of everything that happened in Halloween H2O. Fearing she might make the same mistake of killing an innocent person, decides she needs to be sure and unmask this guy to confirm it is in fact her brother. Michael Myers then taking this moment of weakness to his advantage, grabbing his sister, almost falling off the building, but instead stabbing Lori in the back back as we get a final goodbye of this character with her brother. I'll see you in hell. This, this step bro stuff is going way too far. Why'd you kiss him? I can only imagine the pure hate and anger a lot of Halloween Michael Meyer fans had the first time they saw this sequence go down in the theater. Because again, the franchise pulled off the impossible. You brought back Laurie Strode. You erased an entire series of films so that this could happen. Managed to make a good movie with a few flaws in there, but one that people were willing to go back to the theater for and celebrate Michael again and you kill her off in the first 15 minutes of Resurrection? And I guess I can't really blame the producers and makers of this movie so much, as Jamie Lee Curtis, the actress who plays Laurie Strode, wanted this to happen so that she no longer had to make another movie because her intention was to end off the Michael Myers story with H2O and then close that chapter for good, but money talks, and they gave her a good chunk of change to bring her back for this one movie. I just can't think of a franchise that has done this so many times to their main characters. They've done it to Laurie twice now with how Halloween 4 saying Lori died, then Halloween 5 killing off recurring character Rachel, then we get to Halloween 6 and they kill probably the best character you made since Lori, Jamie, and then you resurrect Lori Strode so you could do it one more time in Resurrection, just like... These people hate recurring characters. <laughs> okay, focus, focus. Back to the movie. We have Michael Myers re-enter the mental institution to hand off his knife to a patient there that just happens to have endless trivia about all real life serial killers. Michael Myers is shape walking away as the lights fade. We get the title card, Halloween Resurrections, and you basically get a movie that just does not feel like it belongs in the Halloween franchise because the storyline this movie decides to tell after that opening deals with a couple of college students at Halloween Haddonfield University, who have been accepted and entered into an internet reality show by a company named Danger Entertainment run by Busta Rhymes and Tyra Banks, aka Freddy and Sarah. And I'm sorry, but just eight movies into this franchise, why at all would we care about these nobody people that us, the audience, or Michael Myers has no connection to whatsoever, even more so when all of these characters are just so uninteresting and unwatchable? I'm interested in how Michael Myers embodies 
embodies the politics of violence embedded in pop mythology. But I mentioned how this film just does not feel like a Halloween movie and it's because it was never supposed to be. This is one of those instances in Hollywood that does happen a lot where a studio has a script for a movie that was going to be about a bunch of kids locked in a house with webcams everywhere as a killer was on the loose hunting them down one by one but everyone thought it was part of a show just to entertain and people are actually dying in front of them without anybody realizing it. Oh, and one of the characters who's basically catfishing the main girl of this movie is living in a completely different state so far away from Haddonfield but yet is a vital character in the movie and one of the reasons our characters will survive because the internet. Producer Mustafa Akkad who had the creative rights to Michael Myers thought this was such an interesting and brilliant idea for the early 2000s because it was a new age of technology and webcams and the internet. It was all new and exciting. It'd be like producers today reading a script about a house filled with influencers online who have to make internet content but Michael Myers is in the house with them and they're getting killed one by one. You think I'm joking and laughing about that but there's at least 20% of you out there who just went, yo I'd, I'd kind of watch TikTokers get killed, that sounds like fun. It won't be in 10 years when you rewatch it! But I think the thing with Halloween Resurrection that pushes it from being a bad movie to a movie that's so bad it's actually kind of fun is Buster Rhymes himself. Just like the entire sequence of him being interrupted in watching his kung fu movies, you would think it's originally there to show that Sarah, the main character, has a little common sense and she doesn't want to be trapped in the house of Michael Myers with a bunch of strangers. But no, we all know the purpose of this scene is to establish the fact that because Buster Rhymes watches kung fu, like Keanu Reeves. I know Kung Fu. Bringing us to Halloween Day, where Danger Entertainment is working on setting up all the cameras in the Myers home. Sadly, because one of the producers, Tyra Banks, is so busy making her coffee, while she dances, one of the crew members gets attacked by Michael Myers, letting us know the boy is home. But our uninteresting group of college kids finally arrive to the Myers home, where they are gifted some high-tech webcams for the time that now just really, like I said, date this movie, and are instructed of what their mission is while they're inside this house. They've been told that nothing has been tampered with in inside the Michael Myers house and to look for clues and answers on why Michael Myers went crazy and became a notorious killer. You don't have to do anything. Aren't we supposed to be looking for answers? All right. The devil made him do it. I'm done. I like this guy's attitude. Let's just end the movie right here. Roll credits. I'll be happy with it. But no, instead we're forced to watch these characters roam around the Myers home trying to look for answers. It is just so uninteresting. Mostly due to the fact that these characters are just so one dimensional and only stick to their character traits. The guy who's a chef looks at the food. The guy who's been a douchebag will act like a douchebag. The girl who wants fame and spotlight will do what she can to get it. I will say the one interesting aspect this movie could have had going for it is if they did actually not even touch anything inside the Myers house. And maybe us, the audience, and the characters themselves could learn something about Michael Myers that we haven't before, instead of it all just being falsely planted by Busta Rhymes and his crew to try and bring some entertainment to the show. As our characters continue to lurk around the Myers home, we then cut back to Deckard, who promised he'd be watching even though he's attending a Halloween party with his friend that is dangerously close to being canceled. He's close, buddy. And look, even though I am bagging on the concept and saying it feels so outdated and dumb, I still kind of want to applaud them for attempting this because there were some cool ideas thrown in here and it also feels so early for its time. To where I gotta admit, yeah, it is pretty cool that there is a character that lives in a completely different state so far away from Michael Myers, yet he's so vital to how these characters survive. Being able to see them through this webcam, it just feels like the movie doesn't ever use it to its fullest, like when this character is being killed off by Michael. Watch me. You're in a room full of people watching this go down and how did you not see that happen? But it's at this point in the movie where our characters start to realize that everything around them might actually be staged and they're just guinea pigs in this little experiment. Shit, look at this. Made in fucking Taiwan. But now with this false insecurity, we do follow one of the characters who's lurking around, believing she's safe from any harm, only to find where Michael Myers has been staying for the past 25 years? Seeing that he's been eating rats all this time? This is the second food choice we see of Michael Myers in the entire franchise. Don't forget, in the first film, we hear Dr. Loomis tell us that Michael Myers was eating a dog, and now he also eats rats. But as a person who's been binging these movies nonstop, you have to think about how ridiculous this is, 
because that means he's been here since the end of Halloween 2, living underneath his house all this time until he finally decided to go look for Laurie Strode and John, to then where he traveled from Haddonfield, Illinois, all the way to California, fought Laurie for a bit, let a paramedic die, then he traveled all the way back to Haddonfield, Illinois, take a bit of a couple year break, then traveled once more to California where Lori would be institutionalized, kill her off for good, then make the trip one more time to Haddonfield, Illinois, where we actually get to see his red car being towed away right when Danger Entertainment is setting up everything in this movie like... Michael loves road trips, but Michael now afraid that this girl's gonna eat his snack like a bad co-worker decides to end her off as our out-of-state friend Deckard watching over the webcam starts to get suspicious that looked a little too real and feels he needs to warn Sarah and the authorities. It is at this point that Buster Rhymes feels he needs to step up his game, scare his guests a little bit for the show, leading to the most ridiculous thing that I think has ever happened in a Halloween film. Oh shit, man. Charlie, where the fuck you been at, man? Don't you know we've been looking all over this motherfucker for you? I said, what you looking at me like that for? Huh? You don't get it? You don't get it? You need to get the hell out of here. Go ahead, scoop, skedaddle. It might just be funny now to look back on, but I just feel like it's such a big disrespect for the character and there's no reason for why Michael would not just kill him right then and there. Other than the fact that Busta Rhymes is just one of the popular characters in this movie that needs to make it to the end. But we see the remaining members of the Haddonfield hype house not falling for Busta Rhymes' scares, willing to beat up who they think is Michael Myers only for Busta to get mad. He lets them know if they play along for the rest of the night, there might be a couple of dollars in it for them by the end of it. You would think this is the movie's way to create a little more suspense with our characters because now they're gonna think every time they see Michael it will be Busta Rhymes and they just gotta pretend to be a little scared but it lasts for like 10 seconds because right away Michael shows up and beheads one of their friends. Michael on a rampage here with then crushing the head of another member with his bare hands, fighting off Chef Boy RD with a couple of knives, stabbing him onto a door with Sarah being one of the only remaining members in the house as she talks to a webcam letting Deckard know please help me out. And what probably is the final cool thing I will say about this movie is how Deckard is able to warn the character of Sarah through her phone about where Michael Myers is in the house since he can see all the viewpoints of this live stream. That's where I think the studio was reading the script and was like, you know what? Michael Myers would be awesome in this scene. It could be cool because even now, I think it's kind of cool. But Buster Rhymes finally finds Sarah and lets him know that he sees all the dead bodies and that they need to get out of there. That is, until Michael Myers pops up and because the only character development that we've got for Buster Rhymes is that he's money hungry and likes kung fu movies, he's gonna fight him with some kung fu. And look, I get it, we've all been there. We've all had that moment where we walk out of a John Wick movie or some sort of popular action flick and you're like, I feel like the main character, I can do all this, but you can't be kung fuing and kicking around and actually kicking Michael Myers' butt. You disrespected him earlier by yelling and touching him and now you're just spitting on him while he's down by kicking him out the window. Michael does, however, cut the wire that he was hanging from stabbing Busta Rhymes as revenge for his bad kung fu moves chasing down Sarah in the garage. Sadly, Sarah has not seen any kung fu movies that would help her out in this situation, but it looks like she maybe did watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because she decides to bust out a chainsaw. But when wielding the chainsaw, Sarah accidentally starts a fire in the garage, being trapped under some video equipment, thinking all hope is lost until... Trick or treat, motherfucker. Busta Rhymes and Michael battle it out some more until finally Busta decides the only way that you can defeat Michael is through his balls. Electrocuting him to the point that it appears he's passed out, leaving him in that burning house as Busta and Sarah walk away waiting for the ambulance and police. We see that Sarah thanks Deckard over the news for helping her escape, while Busta Rhymes gives this poor and hypocritical speech. Michael Myers is not a soundbite, a spinoff tie-in, some kind of celebrity scandal. Michael Myers is a killer shark. It just has no effect when this man was trying to profit off Michael Myers and this is supposed to be his arc. But because we're eight movies into the franchise, producer Mustafa Akkad always has it in the contract that by the end of the film, it should be clear that Michael still has a way of being alive. I do like though that this was technically the first time we got the burnt Michael Myers mask and we're about to get it again in Halloween Kills, but 
Can you imagine if they actually made a sequel to this one and that is what he was gonna look like? The boy has no hair! This literally would have been burnt egghead Michael Myers walking around. It would have looked so ridiculous. But there's no need to worry about that because Halloween Resurrection was the movie that finally dropped the nail, ended it all. They have gone too far with Michael. They turned him into a straight up joke that no one was afraid of anymore so bad that they needed to hit the reset button, bring in someone like Rob Zombie to reboot the franchise and start all over. I totally get if Halloween Resurrection is the type of movie you put on just to have a little bit of laughs here and there or scroll on your phone. There is a bit of a silly, cheesy, fun rewatchability to it. But to me, my blood just starts to boil with how much they disrespect Michael Myers in this movie. But those are just my thoughts on Halloween Resurrection. I want to know from you Halloween fans out there, what did you think of this movie? Were you someone who actually saw it in the theater? What was your reaction to seeing it for the first time? Are you someone that actually likes this movie? But until then, I will catch you on the next Halloween review.